Welcome back everyone. Spring is undoubtedly in the air. Actually, it's been in the air for a few weeks now. And it may even be summer by the time I finish this all up and get it posted. But regardless of what season you're watching this in, I've got big plans to make my own springtime collection for myself by hand. And it should come as no shock that I have been oh, stockpiling bedding and curtains from Goodwill just for this occasion. And we are going to turn this into the cottagecore wardrobe you didn't know you've been dreaming about. So what is cottagecore? Well, for that, we'll need to go to where all aesthetics live. Pinterest. Cottagecore style is like plants and mushrooms, but make it romantic. Or like ceramic cookware, if it were fashion. Or pretty much any scenescape from any Studio Ghibli movie, if it was made into clothing. So there are a few details of these designs I want to zoom in on. There are a lot of full skirts, usually gathered. A lot of puffy sleeves as well. Feminine details like pin tucks and ruffles and collars. So we're going to try to incorporate that into all of our designs. So let's look through all of our fabric options and get to sketching. <laughs> So you're sitting down to design, but where does the inspiration come from? That's one of the great things about working with thrifted bed sheets is that we're limited to what we can find, so we can use the fabric we've been collecting as our jumping off point. Sometimes inspiration strikes in surprising ways, and sometimes you find a fabric or a minute that reminds you exactly of this dress off of the mod cloth website that you saved on your phone a while ago. I guess I could have purchased this dress, but the thing about making it myself is I can make all the modifications I want, such as raising the waistline and adding a cute collar. The pattern for this dress I based off a dress I already had in my closet that was a similar style and had a fit to it that I really liked. I did make some modifications, like changing the neckline a little bit and adding some extra fabric to the sides since I was using a woven and it wouldn't have any stretch to it. This pattern was actually pretty simple. Because I was going for a boxy look, I didn't have to worry about putting in any darts or curved seams. Uh, just really straightforward and came together quick. For the sleeves, I cut out a basic sleeve shape, just way oversized. To what my arm's eye was and then I ran gathering threads around the top and bottom that way I could bunch it up and get a nice poof to the sleeve shape. Well I don't really have any shame that this dress is pretty much a direct ripoff. Not all inspiration is or should be that direct. I know when I first started doing costume design, I didn't like to do a lot of research. Not out of laziness, but because I had this fear that if an idea didn't come to me through some like divine beam of creativity directly into my brain, then it wasn't original enough and therefore wasn't good enough. But the problem with just waiting on inspiration to strike is that you often end up recreating something that already exists without even realizing it. Or you create something that sort of lacks depth and nuance because there's no concrete concepts to anchor it and sort of inform those deeper levels of design. I think a lot of times the fear when it comes to design is of a one-to-one -one comparison, but there are ways to do research and be informed that can avoid that situation. I know when I used to work for haunted houses, for example, rather than just looking at what other haunts were doing or even what 
horror films were doing. We looked at a lot of folklore and a lot of stuff from video games. Not even horror games, but just video games in general have a lot of cool, like, monsters and weapons and neat, mysterious environments. So it was a way for us to do relevant research that was still a step removed and a step beyond maybe what was expected or what other people were doing. So in the case of designing these dresses, that meant looking at historical garments that had elements of what we had seen in cottage core design that also worked with the fabric that we had. In the case of these white bed sheets with like the colorful plaid stripes, I realized there was a lot of fabric. Definitely enough to do something really full and gathered and floor length. And it was also really thin and airy and flowy and mostly white. And when I think of white, flowy, historical garments with lots of gathers and fabric, I of course think of the chemise à la reine. This was a historical garment that was categorized by being light and flowy, but with an accentuated waist, unlike a typical chemise. Also, it had a fully gathered skirt and was made for springtime in the countryside. So I knew it would be the perfect reference to go off of. The addition of the colors and not just the solid white would of course veer it away from tradition. So I wanted to look at other ways to modernize it a bit. I decided to do elastic around the waist instead of the traditional sash. And I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do for the top. And I was just chilling out watching YouTube one day. And I saw Sostein, who's one of my absolute favorite content creators, wear this dress in one of her videos. And I just fell in love with how the off the shoulder top looked with all of the full gathers. And I thought that combined with the shorter sleeves would help really give this the warm weather feel that I wanted while still being reminiscent of the chemise à la reine. I decided to add elastic under the bust and to the waistline since there was a bunch of fabric all gathered together. I didn't want it getting poofy and weird and I thought doing this would help keep a nice shape throughout the waistline in the middle of the dress and make it much more flattering. This whole dress is basically just a gigantic rectangle with two smaller rectangles for the sleeves. And all of the shape is just created by making channels and running elastic. So this was a super easy dress to bang out and it took me only a day to put this whole thing together. Now this was not the only dress with a direct historical inspiration. For the pink fabric I found, I decided to make a dress based off a traditional Korean style known as the hanbok. I was drawn to this dress for the same reason I like a lot of 60s fashion. You're sort of not required to be shapely to create the correct silhouette. And I had seen modern versions of this dress that were more casual with shorter skirts that I just absolutely loved the aesthetic of. Now obviously I didn't want to just directly create a hanbok, but I knew I could use the inspirations of a more structured top with a very high waist and a full gathered skirt. I decided to use this button-up pattern I had found for the top. I thought it would have nice structure and I liked that the collar created a v-neck like the hanbok. And it was also a collar style that I hadn't done before, and it's always good to expand your repertoire when you have the occasion to do so. I pretty much just cut out this pattern as is. The only difference is I just cut it out at the waistline instead of making the full shirt. The skirt for this dress and the orange dress were pretty much done the same way. I just took a gigantic rectangle of fabric, at least twice the width of the bodice. You can definitely use more for this, and in this case, I just used whatever length was available to me out of the fabric that I had. This seems like this is way too much fabric, but once you start gathering it, you'll be surprised how quickly it actually does gather down to size. 
for the orange skirt since it was less fabric and only one layer i just did a gathering thread on my machine by using the longest stitch setting and not back stitching and then i was able to pull the ends of the thread and gather up the fabric for the pink skirt uh, because it was double layered and I wanted a drawstring detail, I sewed a channel and then gathered it all onto cording that I had made. I decided to bring more cottagecore elements into the design by adding little details such as ribbons onto the sleeve and pocket and strawberry patches onto the collar. A lot of design is in those little details. And that was especially the case for the green dress I designed. The fabric was super soft, but still lightweight and flowy and had a really just delicate organic pattern. So I wanted the dress to feel the same way. Something very soft and feminine with small delicate details. So I decided I wanted to do buttons and lace trim and a little bit of ruffle and a little puff to the sleeve and some pin tucks to give it those understated but appreciated touches. I was really pleased with how the button up pattern turned out for the pink dress so I decided to use that pattern again but I wanted it to have a more feminine shape to the bodice. So I achieved this by adding back darts to it in addition to the front darts and doing curved seams at the side. I was able to create pin tucks in this pattern by tracing out the pattern and then cutting where I wanted the pin tucks to go. I knew I wanted them to be three fourths of an inch wide so I then spaced out the pattern with an extra inch and a half for each gather and then cut out another pattern that then would have the extra space for the pin tucks that I needed. the trim and collar detail, I used this lace ribbon I found at the dollar store, uh, A, because it was really cheap, and B, because I really liked the off-white natural color and I thought that would really complement the print that was on the fabric. As I put all these pattern pieces and details together for the top, it really was giving me strong like 40s, 50s vibe. So I veered away from the original ruffle skirt I had drawn out and decided to do a circle skirt instead to play into that 1950s vintage feel and silhouette. I think that that is another important element to design just remaining open and flexible. Just because something is drawn on paper doesn't mean that it's set in stone. Adapting and responding to the fabric and the dress as it comes together is how you land in a place that feels unique and complete. You know, there's no point in forcing a garment to be something it doesn't want to be just because that's how you initially saw it. There's definitely a lot of adapting that went on in this first slash last dress. I drew it out first because initially this is the one I had the clearest vision for how I wanted to use the fabric. But funny enough, this is the dress that underwent the most changes as I continued to work on it. I was first inspired by the bodice and neckline and sleeves of this dress but I wanted to play around with doing flounce for the neckline like this dress had but then I also liked the skirt portion and just the more relaxed casual feel of this dress and I sort of think that's the most 
typical way to design, right? This Frankensteining of elements into something new. Because people have been designing and making clothes throughout history. So pretty much any shape you could make is already established. There are only but so many necklines, sleeve shapes, skirt designs, and so it's just putting together those elements that you want. You know, what if I did a boat neck with a bishop sleeve and a fit and flare skirt? Wait, would that be like really cute though? Okay, video idea where I just take all of these different neckline and sleeve and skirt shapes and I put them in sort some sort of like random generator or I like spin a wheel and then we have to make a dress designed on what it lands on. I think that would be cool. Although the combination you go with typically is not going to be random. It's going to be informed by the time period or aesthetic that you're going for and what works best on your body and your shape and figure. So after drawing out this dress I came across a picture of this one and the fabric really reminded me of it and I really liked the sort of scallop petal shape to the bottom so I wanted to incorporate that as well and started to veer off course and decided to do a panel skirt for this. As far as the bodice for this one I definitely ran into some difficulty. I started out by using a pattern I had drafted for myself previously that used princess seams but this did not work out. I ended up having to do just like a couple of different mock-ups and just continue to pin and reshape and resize until I finally got a fit I was happy with, and this is what the final pieces looked like. So for the ruffle for the neckline, I decided to do a circular flounce. So I cut out donut shapes that were the width that I wanted the trim to be. And then I connected all of those end to end, so I ended up with like a corkscrew of fabric that was the same length as my neckline. The advantages to doing a flounce is that you still get a ruffle effect without having to do gathers. So there's less bulk in your seam. So this can be really nice for things like necklines that you want to lay very clean and flat. Once I saw the top with the flounce, I really loved how this looked. So I decided to just skip the sleeves. Plus we were pretty much getting into summer at this point and I wanted to be able to wear this dress for as long as possible. And in that same idea of versatility and getting the most I could out of these pieces, I decided to make the skirt and bodice separate since I really was happy with them but I'd put so much work into them at this point. I wanted to be able to dress them up, dress them down, and really get as much wear as I possibly could out of them and have them be really versatile pieces in my wardrobe. So that's pretty much the journey of bringing these dresses to life. So let's get into it and see the final work of this complete collection.
those are the dresses and I hope you like them. I mean, I know I do and I don't think you can tell I made them out of bed sheets. Which is the other part of this I haven't even really touched on, which is the sustainability. You know, I'm not contributing to stuff in landfills. I'm giving things a new life and that really does just ignite my passion for sewing and creating even more. If I were to pick a favorite dress, I don't think that I could, uh, which is a total cop-out, but there are different, there are definitely favorite elements I have to each of them. For the orange and the pink dress, I really just love the overall shape and fit. This idea of an oversized dress but it's not. It fits me. It has a correct length. It hits me where I want. The shoulders are where I need them to be. So it's able to have these like boxy elements while still having fit and shape. For the green dress, in addition to how just like soft the fabric is, I love the understated design elements to it. Like it's definitely has the most detail, but at first glance, you may not notice, you know, or put a lot of stock into the pin tucks and the trim and the buttons and the little things like that. But when they're all together, you have a dress that has a look to it, has a design, feels complete, and also just feels like I can wear it anywhere, you know? Throw on flats, go on a walk around town. They're on heels, go to like a dinner or a garden party. I just love that it feels flexible because it hits that middle ground of being designed, but in a way that's understated and functional. The chemise a la meets picnic dress. My favorite thing about that is how I think clear the concept comes through. It definitely still gives me those chemise a la historical vibes while feeling trendy and modernized and like something I would see on a page while scrolling through Instagram. And for the floral dress, I think that the thing I love the most is that I decided to make it separate. Because when the dress is all together, it's definitely like a whole look. But now I can just put on the top with some jeans, the skirt with a tank top, it's much more dressed down, things I can wear a lot of different occasions, get a lot of use out of, and I love that I really did create a wardrobe with all of these pieces. Things I can continue to wear for a long time in a lot of different scenarios, get a lot of use out of, things I have a lot of love for, and I hope this inspires you to use that sewing machine you haven't touched in a while, or see what fabrics are down at your local thrift stores, or design some pieces for that fabric you didn't know what to do with. As always, comment, uh, like, subscribe. If you do want to support this channel monetarily, there is a link to my coffee page in the description. But the biggest thing you can do for me is just share this video. If you like this, chances are there's people out there who haven't seen it that'll like it too. So share the dresses, share the content, share the message, share me, share my efforts. I'm not going to try to make five different dresses for only one video next time. So I should be able to be cranking out this content a little more regularly going forward. And I just can't wait to see you on this channel next time. Thanks as always for watching.